we will start by defining the domain of the boundary value problem. In this case, that is the fluid region surrounding the airfoil. With Workbench open, start by dragging fluid flow fluent into the project schematic. Rename it airfoil flow to help with organization. Next, right click on geometry and click properties to open the properties pane if it's not already open. Under analysis type, change it to 2D. This tells the solver that the governing equations will be the 2D conservation equations. Then, double click geometry to open discovery. Once discovery has opened, click on the menu icon in the top left and select settings. Go to units in display precision and if it has not already been modified, set the length to meters and the grid spacing to 0.1 meters. This is more appropriate for the scale of the geometry we will be creating. Then close this window. Next, select the sketch tool if it has not already been selected and click on the Z axis so we know we are sketching on the correct plane. And then press the V key on your keyboard to orient the view to be facing this plane. Before we start sketching, make sure you have downloaded the NACA 0012 text file from the tutorial webpage and saved it in a convenient location. This contains coordinates for points along the airfoil that we can use to create its shape in Discovery. Click on the menu icon in the top left corner and select Insert Geometry. Navigate to where you saved the file, click on it, and click Open. This creates a sketch of the airfoil on our sketch plane. This text file contains a list of X and Y coordinates for a series of points defining the airfoil in the second and third columns. The first line of the document reads polyline equals false. This tells Discovery to view the coordinates as a curve instead of a series of connected line segments, which makes the geometry easier to mesh in a later step. Back in Discovery, we need to define the boundaries of our domain around the airfoil. Start by zooming out. Then, select the three-point arc tool under the sketch tools. First, click the y-axis above the origin. Next, click the y-axis below the origin. This sets the two endpoints of our arc. Now, drag the cursor to the left to define the arc until the third point ends up on the y-axis, and left-click to create the arc. We want this arc to be centered in our coordinate system. To achieve this, select Constraints in the top bar and click Coincident. First, click on the central point of the arc and then click on the origin. This constrains the center point to be at the same location at the origin, which centers the arc we created. Next, select the line tool from the sketch options. Start by clicking the top point of the arc and dragging the cursor to the right. Ensure that this line is horizontal. We can see this by noticing the right ankle marker in the intersection of the top arc with the line. Left click to create the first line. Next, drag the cursor downwards to create a vertical line. Again, make sure that the right ankle marker appears at the intersection. We also want this to be the same length as the diameter of the arc, 
So move the cursor downwards until you see the black dashed line indicating that they are at the same level. And left click to create the line. Finally, drag your cursor to the bottom point of the arc and left click to create the final line. We have now created the general shape of our domain, but we need to constrain it so it is fully defined. We can do this by choosing the dimensions of the lines. Select the Dimension tool under the Constraints options. First, click the arc to create a dimension. Move your cursor away and left click to set the dimension. Next, select the top vertical line and do the same thing to create the dimensions. Doing this fully defines our geometry. Click on the dimension near the arc to edit it and enter 12.5 to set the radius to be 12.5 meters. Zoom out to make sure you can see everything. Next, do the same thing with the horizontal line to make sure that it is also 12.5 meters. This fully constrains our sketch. To turn the sketch into a surface, press the 3D mode near the sketch options. Expanding design in the tree, we can see that this created a surface. If we zoom in and hover near the airfoil, however, we can see that the region inside the airfoil is still a part of the domain. We want the domain to only include regions in the flow, so we need to remove that. To do this, select the Project tool in the top bar. First, select the airfoil curve. Next, in the side options, select the receiving surface option and select the surface. Click the check mark to complete the process. We can see that this has projected the airfoil curve onto the surface. Press escape to close the project tool. Next, we can right click the surface inside the airfoil curve and click delete. This leaves us with just the outer surface. We can see this in the tree, as we only have a single surface. In addition, there is something called sketching plane that contains the sketch of the airfoil geometry. We only need the surface for our simulation, so we can right click it and select exclude from simulation. This ensures that the geometry only includes the fluid region. If it does not happen automatically, right click again and select hide. This makes it easier to select the correct curves in the future. The Fluent interface does not allow us to click on boundaries to apply the desired boundary conditions. This means that we need to set up the locations on which these conditions will be applied now. We can do this using name selections. Start by zooming out to see the full geometry. Then, click the Name Selection tool in the bottom left. First, hold Control and select the arc and the two horizontal lines. Click New and name it Inlet. Next, select the right horizontal line without holding Control. Click New and name it Outlet. Finally, zoom back into the airfoil, 
select the curve, click New, and name it Airfoil. This provides selectable locations on which the boundary conditions can be applied. With the geometry completed, we can close Discovery. Back in the Workbench interface, make sure to save the project in the desired location.